Hi, I'm Jill Fry. In the last video, I showed you some of my light painting tools. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use them. How to set up your camera, what equipment you're going to need, and how to get you started. Today I'm going to be talking to you about light painting. Now I basically do two types of light painting. I do the type where I'm going out to photograph a scene like a tree or a shed or a bridge or something like that and I want to light it naturally. But then there's the other kind of light painting which is more colourful and artistic and that is the sort of light painting I want to discuss with you in this video. Okay, so let's get started with what equipment you're going to need. You're obviously going to need your camera. And you'll also need a tripod. And another piece of equipment which is useful, but not absolutely necessary, is a trigger or an involometer, or something where you can trigger the camera remotely. Now for people who follow me um, specifically for the Pluto trigger, there is a section just a little bit later in this video where I show you the settings that you use on your Pluto. Oh, and the other thing you're obviously going to need is your light tools. So. Hopefully you've all been running around the shops and, and raiding the kids' toy box so that you've got some tools that you can play with. So first of all, let's set up a few things in your camera menu. You need to be shooting on RAW. And the reason why you need to shoot on RAW is because you might want to later on combine some of the photos that you've taken. And this is especially true, for example, if you're light painting on a dark night and you want to also capture the scene. It's really, really hard to capture the scene and light painting when it's really, really dark. It's actually better if you've got a little bit of moonlight. But if it's dark and you need to capture the scene as well as your light painting, then you'll need to combine those shots later in Photoshop. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. The other thing you need to think about too is to make sure that in your camera menu setting that noise reduction is turned off. The reason for this is because if it's on then the camera will automatically do a noise reduction. And if you for example have taken 20 seconds to do your light painting shot the camera will then take another 20 seconds to do its noise reduction in camera. And it's just not necessary. We can do our noise reduction in our post-production if, if required. So just turn noise reduction off. With regards to your ISO, the higher the ISO, the more noise is going to creep into your image. But what I find with light painting is as the tools can be so bright, you generally don't need too high an ISO. I start at 400 ISO and depending on the night and the light conditions and the tool that I'm using, I adjust it up and down from there. Some of you that do night photography and usually use a wide open aperture to capture as much light as possible will be surprised to know that the f-stop that you're going to need is round about f8. Now the reason why you need to shut down your aperture is because of the amount of light created by the light painting tools. When you're light painting, you don't want it wide open or what's going to happen is you'll actually capture things like the person's feet in the scene. And you don't want to see the person's feet, you just want to see the light that you're creating. So try stopping down to f5.6, f8, 
so you don't see people's feet. Time. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can either set your camera onto manual mode and dial in the time that you think it's going to take to do the light painting. The other alternative is to put your camera on the bulb mode and then use a remote trigger to open up the shutter when you want it to open and to close the shutter when you have finished your light painting. Basically I use my Pluto trigger to do this. So I'll show you in the next section for those of you who've got a Pluto how to set it up to quickly capture these sort of shots. So for those who have got a Pluto trigger, this is what you need to do. You open up your app on your phone and in the top left hand corner there are three bars. Tap on the three bars and you'll see the first item in the menu is shutter release. Have a look and see where it says the word tap. Scroll across to where it says the word lock. This is the mode that you're going to use. Basically in this mode you tap the play button to open the shutter and you tap it again to finish the exposure. Handy tips. Okay the first one is white balance. Basically this is a preference thing but I would choose anything but auto because on the auto mode the camera is choosing what white balance you want for the shot and if later you wish to combine shots then it might make it just a little bit tricky. So set your camera to daylight for example, I find that seems to be pretty good. Set it to daylight and then obviously when you start to take shots the next day, during the day, it's not going to upset your shot. The next tip is to wear dark clothing, including dark shoes. I actually wear my gum boots, my black gum boots. And the reason I do this is so that as a person, I don't show up in the shot. I want the shot to be about the light painting, not about my feet. So make sure you wear dark clothing unless, well, of course, you're intending to have a person in the shot in bright clothing. That's a different matter. But if you just want the light painting, then wear dark clothing. The other thing is to also, after you've taken your shot, just check your screen. Press preview and check your screen. What you don't want is that your light painting is blown out, that you can't see the colour. So if this is the case, then you need to either close up your aperture or take down your ISO. Obviously, if it's too dark, then you need to do the reverse. You either need to open up your aperture or increase your ISO. Now another little handy tip is that if you are using sparklers, I suggest don't try matches because they just blow out in the wind and you'll be frustrated and you won't be able to light it. So either take out a cigarette lighter or a brulee torch even is pretty good to get those little things lit up because otherwise you'll just be frustrated because you won't be able to get them lit. Works like a treat. Now, where to focus? If you're taking a shot just for the light painting, then focus on the tool. So basically what I do is I get the person to hold the tool up and we shine a bright light on the person and the tool and we focus on the tool. If you also want to get a scene shot, then in this case I usually take a separate shot and I'll focus on the stars, focus at infinity. And you can do this in your live view by going zoom zoom on your live view to get to 10 by magnification and honing in your focus on the stars.
Okay, so you've got your camera set up, you've got your light painting tools, and now just go out and have some fun. Just start by waving them about to see what sort of effect they can create. And then we can start honing in our skills a little bit to produce orbs and things like that if you so desire. So I'm going to take out three tools. I'm going to take out my lightsaber. I'm going to take out my great big tube. And I'm going to take out some sparklers. And I'll show you what sort of effects I can get with this. Now one little tip, which you might want to try, is I have put a little bit of tape on the end of one of my lightsabers. It doesn't have to be this big, it can just be a little one. And I put my sparkler taped onto the end of my lightsaber or other light painting tool. And that way I can get two effects with one. In the next video I'm going to show you how I process my photos when I have two shots. So if for example I want to have a night sky shot and I want to have a light painting shot and I want to combine them together. So stay tuned for the next one. So Bruce wanted to say goodbye too. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.